Melanie. How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. It is a beautiful day off of Key West. I'm out here with my good friend Zach. We are doing a little bit of fishing. Um, and if you know anything about me, I brought my dive gear as well. But uh, we're going to do some rod and reel fishing. And today's a little different. Uh, I've actually recently made some changes and I'm going to try and not talk too much before we get into fishing. But I've made some changes uh, with the business lately and uh, effective August 1st, I actually, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this, but if you, did, you don't, you don't know. Effective August 1st, I officially stopped um, accepting rod and reel charters and I will be focusing on just spear fishing and sword fishing. Um, and because I did that, I've had so many people that have fished with me over the years. I, I wanted to find a place to send them, find them someone good that they can, or someone that I trust that they can fish with as well. And that's kind of where Zach comes in. Um, Zach has been a friend of mine since I moved down here to Key West nine years ago. He's one of the first people I met. Um, just kind of took me under his wing for no real reason. He's actually eight generations down here in Key West. So the guy knows his stuff. He's been down here doing this kind of forever. Um, but what I wanted to do was actually have Zach take me fishing. Uh, these are his spots. He's kind of running the show today. I thought it'd be kind of fun, honestly, for me, because I'm not going to have to do much. I'm kind of on a charter. And, uh, and you guys will get to meet Zach. So if you are looking to get out and go fishing, uh, he can be your guy from now on. And what we did, or what I did was, Zach asked me what I wanted to do. And kind of just so it felt like an authentic charter, I wanted to give him something extreme because that's pretty much what people ask for is extreme fish that's not doable. So I told him, <laughs> I told him I wanted a 10 pound mangrove snapper, which not really reasonable. There are some caught here and there. Um, if you know me, you know how much I love mangroves. So I told him I wanted to catch snappers and I told him my trophy would be a 10 pound mangrove. So he ran the boat this morning. I'll be honest with you. I don't know where we are. This is his spot, um, but we've got some chum in the water. He's cutting up bait. Um, and we are going to get to fishing and kind of just see how the day goes. Let's rock and roll. All right. All right, talk to me, Zach. What am I fishing here? All right. So right now, we're just using a small jig head, a monofilament, a fluorocarbon leader. About 20 pound test. How long is this? Like, uh, it should be about eight foot. Eight I normally foot. go about a pull and a half. I don't really measure it out, but we're gonna use a small little chunk of uh, ballyhoo here. Okay. I fillet it down after I scale it. Makes it nice and easy to get the hook on there. Beautiful, I like it. You, know, you wanna match the chum, that's what they're feeding off of. You know, we okay. gave them 15, 20 minutes, let them sit there and chew and get comfortable. And then uh, what we're going to do is keep that rod tip down, keep feeding that line out. The first couple of fish are going to be the ones that straighten that monofilament out for you. So yeah. <laughs> getting those first couple hooked are a little, the hardest part there. Here they come. Got a big old cuda. Yep. Oh, there running. Oh, oh. Well, that was quick. And now, oh, yeah. cuda's ah. on him. Cuda's on him. Oh, he's got him. <laughs> Well, that was not what I had in mind. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. You're gonna be fish cakes instead. Yeah. Pretty tenderized. So, there's our yellowtail. And let me tell you, it's not always normally that easy. Uh, and Zach may be able to agree with me on this. Yes. One of the common questions. I always get is what's the secret to yellowtail? How do you how do you catch big yellowtail? What am I looking for? You're looking for big yellowtail. Like you want to have spots that have them. Unfortunately, there's not really a real secret. Um, I know fishing in general. That's kind of the, always the question. What's the secret to it? Well, in my opinion, the secret is put the time in and find the spots. When you find them, having the right conditions. Yeah. You know. I mean, some days, some days you'll come out here and they'll. 
I mean, you can see today, they're coming pretty much right up to the back of the boat. That took me five seconds in the water to get a bite. Some days you can come here and chum for two hours and they won't cooperate, so. Um, but Kuda got the best of us on that one. We're gonna give it another try. So one of the big, biggest issues I have with trying to explain yellowtailing to clients who haven't done it is feeding a line. You want it to be a constant flow. It's got to go out. It wants to, like Zach said, you want to mimic the chum that's coming out of the bag. We've got this 25. Oh. Ah. Woo. Excuse me. Nice one. There we go. Yeah, I'll take care. You want. You want to mimic the chum that's coming out of that bag. So we've got that big frozen block and it's just with the current, it's just trickling water out to the back or a uh, chum out to the back, excuse me. And we're using those little chunks and trying to mimic it. And if you sit there and stop the bait from flowing and going with the flow, the yellowtail can sense that. So that's the biggest issue I have when trying to explain it to people. That um, right there, good tacos down at the hole. That's beautiful, beautiful yellowtail. And again, it is not always that easy. I think yellowtail more than anything are very temperamental. Um, like Zach said, they can turn on one second, turn off the next. And they do not always cooperate. Oh. This is kind of weird, someone handed me bait. <laughs> you can see just a little chunk there. And I don't know if you heard him. Zach said he scales the ballyhoo before he chops it up, which I never thought of. Um, when you try to run a hook through the scales, a lot of times it'll mush up. Ballyhoo is real soft. So he scales it before he chops it and it prevents that from happening. I found that kind of interesting. I've never done that. that line out and a lot of times you just watch it and there it goes it starts to run I just close it and reel that's all you got to do this feels like a blue runner but it's not but it's not it was big head bobbing Ooh, look at those all day baby come on okay you need some dentistry work? Yeah. Blue Gabe's gonna give me crap for not being able to hold a fish. Yeah. Sorry, Bubba. <laughs> Might want to retie that one. Did I hit it with the front? Did I hit it with the front or the back? Uh, it doesn't matter. You didn't chase it. Whatever. We're good. <laughs> All right, Zach, get in there, bro. Catch one. All right. So I'm gonna be honest. This feels really strange, um, being the one fishing, and having one, having someone hand me baits. Zach knows the feeling. It's a strange, strange concept fishing on a kind of a makeshift charter. That was <laughs> fired up. And something else I think that's important to remember with yellowtailing, there's not one recipe. Some days they'll eat 30 pound fluorocarbon with big chunks of uh, bonita or ballyhoo or whatever it is. Some days you have to scale all the way down to 12 or 10 pound test just to get them to eat. Um, where we are today, the water is crazy clear, so we're using a lighter leader. Sometimes you have to go down to bear hooks without weight on them. Um, just kind of got to keep an open mind when yellowtailing comes again. There's not one recipe for it. No, most of the time I'm just kind of screaming at them to get them past the sharks. <laughs> <laughs> get I them agree past the, bar the barracudas, you know, the predators are a big thing here. And if you just sit here and watch the yellowtail, you'll see how worried they are about. Yeah. 
know, the barracudas and the sharks that are on these spots to watch their back. Yep. And then, like, as soon as a, a, a shark or a barracuda comes rolling through, right behind them there's, you know, 15, 20 extremely hungry yellowtail that <laughs> will pretty much eat anything. Keep your enemies close. Yeah. So as Zach was saying, predators are a big thing. Once you start chumming anywhere, action brings action. You're gonna have some sharks and barracudas and whatnot come in for the most part. Um, one of the biggest things as captains, you heard him just say, is the urgency to get these out of the water. You can't really baby them. Just as much as we like eating them, so do the predators. Brain and, brain and bleed as always, no different up here. He was fired up. Mm -hmm. Look at all the yellowtails following him. Oh, don't start with me, Blue Runner. Mr. <laughs> Five Pound Blue Runner. gonna be annoying and say it again it's not always this easy some days it is some days it's not these yellow tails are cooperating today I've had days where I've chummed them for two hours and caught two or three of them but I think we got enough yellow tails apparently Zach has something else in mind so we're gonna switch it up so I have two of the rods rigged ready to go Okay. Yeah. You want me here? Get a couple big mangrove snapper. So Maybe be a bit of a pain with how many of these little sharks and stuff are around. You're probably gonna want to eat our pinfish, but we're gonna try and fish through that. Alright. So we're bumping up. What's on here? 25 or 30? Uh, I think it's 30. 30, 30 pound fluorocarbon. Don't ask me what ounce this is because I can't remember remember the ounces but a bigger jig head. We're switching to pinfish. We're gonna try and catch a mangrove snapper. And with this, pretty much the same concept. Do you want big ones or small ones or does it matter? Well, I'd like to start out with small ones. Okay. It's a little easier for them to eat. Yeah. It's a little easier for most people to uh, get the hook in them as well. To the lip? Yeah, just go up to the bottom. Pin fish through the lip. Alrighty. Like I said, same concept as yellowtail for the most part. I know. The jig head's just going to be a little bit bigger. Of course, you got a lot of bait on there, so he's going to want to fight against that jig there for a little bit. And once your line gets straightened out, then we, uh, Dude. Keep forgetting I'm on a charter. Oh, yeah. That is something very, very big there at <laughs> I was looking 48 at that. feet of water. Are they going to run like a yellowtail? or? Most of the time they don't take off as quick as a yellowtail. Okay. You know, the mangroves, the mutton snappers, you know, the larger snappers that you get on the drift back there, it's more of a subtle thing. All right. And especially with the pinfish, those, those mangrove snappers can't get that thing down in one bite. Yeah, makes so sense. So it's, like it's like a double, triple chomp. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Yep. You got to give them that time to get to the hook, you know. Most of the time that first bite's trying to take the motor off that bait. So they're trying to get that tail first so that, you know, okay. their food can't sense. run from them. That makes sense. I seen the mangies when we first. No, I did. Right. When we first pulled up, I could see them. I saw a couple come into the slick. They're there. Sometimes they just don't want to eat. That's why we brought the steel reels. Your least favorite food? 
<laughs> yeah, their least favorite food. <laughs> least nutritional as well. Yeah. Eat it every time though. Find the bottom? Oh. He ate it and swam with it. Ah. Tax man. Think so already? You felt it? Yeah. Yeah, dead weight. So that fish kind of ate it as I was moving it a little bit. Tried to get him up as fast as I could, but. Tax man had other plans. Seeming like a spinner, huh? Feels like a bull with his big head shakes. He didn't know who he messed with. Oh. There he went. Just enough of, to wear me out and give me no satisfaction. Yeah, so the line is fray, rubbed from about there to about there, which tells me in a shark's mouth, rubbing across his rough skin. That was Mr. Shock. Both of them. There you go. There you go. I'm gonna get mine out so it doesn't get eaten, whatever. Yep. Ah, I got an Almaco. I had a feeling. So this, Zach was behind the camera, but look at the size of that mangrove. <laughs> Dude. Wow. Real deal. That is a full-size mangrove. Holy crap. Well, so that's what we've been trying to catch. And again, it, sometimes you gotta get creative, change it up. Wow, that's a beauty. This one's not gonna make the 10 pound mark, so I think, no. we, have, I think we have to try again. We've got work to do. But that's still a good one. We know they're down there. You just picked it up on the drift, huh? Yeah. Was it a cut? Cut pin or a hole pin? Uh, cut. Yeah. Right. And it was ahead of that one, but it also went scaled down on leader as well. What'd you go to? Uh, that right there is the 20. Ah. Uh, oh yeah. So I've got to baby them and get them past the sharks. Uh, yeah. You know how it goes. <laughs> got some turtles up front wrestling. Oh. Looks like they're arguing about something. <laughs> Not the turtle wrestlers. Oh! No way. Yeah, he picked it up early. I was 25 feet down, maybe. Well, he might have got me. I was over here watching the turtle fight. Slightly ruthless, you know? Ooh. 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 Ah! You got him? 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 Ah, oh, here comes you, the shark! You're alright, you're alright, you're alright. Oh! Come here. Oh! Ah! Oh. <laughs> I just I instantly popped mine off. Oh. Flirting with it. On the little reel. On 15 pound mono, 15. main line. We had to scale down. 15 pound mono. Yeah, let me get this shit out of your way. Look at the size of that. That is what we call a full, gr full grown mangrove snapper. <laughs> he told me they were here. I was starting to not believe him. Look at that one. Wow. Thank you, buddy. That is a beautiful, beautiful fish. There you go. 
Sorry, friend, at this time. So as I've said, sometimes you gotta change it up. We started with, what, 30? We've worked down to, I'm fishing a 15 pound main line with a, what, 16 pound, top, 16 pound top shot leader. Fluorocarbon. Um, fluorocarbon. They don't always cooperate right away, but just kinda, if there's any secret to fishing, it's that. Be, be open-minded and adaptable, and you gotta change it up until you figure it out. And, I mean, look at the size of that thing. Gotta be as fluent as the waves. Wow. I'm pumped, that's amazing. So that and, that in any standard is a giant. <laughs> And today that's a small one. Like look at this. Something one of him. Today that's considered a small mangrove. And it's 20 inches, 18 inches. Got him biting. Persistence paid, baby. Like I said. Just gotta change with the waves. And again, YouTube land, I'm annoying about this. We've been here for two and a half hours trying to get these dialed in. Uh, we finally got them to bite. On any on any spawn standard, that's a, a giant, and that's the that's the smallest one that we've caught. Went. Oh. Oh. Woo. <laughs> that is fun. Fast as we get one in the bucket, one's coming over the rail. It's uh, check him out. Look what he ate. A little crab. Oh, look at that. That mangrove spit up a little crab. Okay. It's like yellow tailing, but when you go to reel, it's not a yellow tail. <laughs> <laughs> he actually peeled line out that time. These things have quite a bit more boogie than a yellow tail does. Did you hit him? Oh. Yeah, right. Is it a different one? No. He ate it high, huh? He ate it and swam up with it. That's why I didn't know, even know he was hooked. Wow. Big Grover. Still doesn't beat yours, though. Hey, that's all right. Day's not over, right? There's still time. We're off. So we have, um, we've done some damage. Yes. I think this is becoming one of my favorite things to do is fish a spot and dive it. So we're actually gonna show you. I mean, you saw what we caught up here, yellowtails and some giant mangroves. We're gonna jump in with the dive gear and see what's down there. I didn't have to shoot anything. It's already been a stellar day. I have mangroves, the jello tails. So as you can tell, there's gonna be a second part to this episode, I hate doing that. I just, I had way too much footage, footage to try and shorten this up into one episode. Um, so there's gonna be a second part released on Thursday. Um, if you're watching this four days after its release date, it'll pop up on the bottom um, corner on the up next thing. Um, I did wanna say if you're interested in getting out fishing with Zach, I'm gonna leave all of his info in the description and I'll pop up, I'll put a little thing on the screen for his website. Um, reach out to him, tell him I sent you. He's a great guy, a great fisherman. We were very like-minded, which is why uh, he's kind of the perfect fit to take over my fishing trips. But um, other than that, you got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm happy to get to them. Uh, look out for the second half of this episode. As you can see, I had a pretty close encounter with a shark. 
Uh, we had a nice surprise species we were not expecting come in, so it was a pretty exciting, uh, pretty exciting dive. So, but other than that, thanks so much, and I will see you guys on Thursday. Later.